statement problem saya dengan statement ni adalah yang phrase uh, phrase hak istimewa. So when you say hak, benda tu macam jadi something that people will think benda tu sebati dengan saya. I was born with this. Sebab dia hak, no one can take to it away from me and no one else deserves this. Kumpulan tertentu harus mendapat hak istimewa. So certain groups should receive special rights and privileges. Disagree or agree? Bila kita bercakap tentang kumpulan tertentu, um, sudah pasti um, setiap kumpulan yang terlibat ini ada matlamat masing-masing dalam apa yang mereka ingin capai dalam kehidupan jangka pendek ataupun jangka panjang. Uh, mereka berpegang kepada hak mereka. Mereka akan cakap, okay, uh, I have this right, so with this right, I will try to pursue or to achieve my goals. I agree what you said. So every group of people, they have their own goals and stuff like that. And for us, all Malaysian to come up together and lift everyone up is that we have to lift up those people who are not catching up yet. For me, I believe that's the true intention of being a Malaysian where we help each other out. Saya setuju. Memang ada sepulang manusia ni memang memberikan hak istimewa. Sebab permulaan kita bukannya daripada titik yang sama. Jadi sebagai contoh kalau kita nak cakap tentang Malaysia, memang kita pun tahu yang uh, penjajah pun dia membawa masuk uh, warga Cina dan India dan membentuk kita sebagai sebuah negara pada hari ini. Kita juga perlu mempunyai satu bercemak yang mana hak semua manusia di, di sebuah kelompok, tidak mengira kaum, tidak mengira bangsa agama perlu capai. Bagi contoh isu kemiskinan. Isu kemiskinan, tidak mengira bangsa, tidak agama, semua perlu diselesaikan. Bismillah, uh, nama saya Ahmad Haris Minu Hilmi. Uh, boleh dipanggil Haris, 19 tahun. Saya pelajar di German Nation Institute, mengambil aliran A-Level. Jadi bila kita cakap tentang hak kesemewaan ini, sebenarnya saya lah antara salah seorang yang menerima hak istimewa sebagai anak Melayu. Saya bukan pelajar A-level yang ditajuk oleh MARA. So, saya will go on as the first one who disagree with the statement. Um, saya so, setuju, you know, ada matlamat, ada kepentingan kumpulan tertentu yang kita kena jaga. But how do I see it is that um, hak ini ialah something yang sangat strong. It's a very strong thing that you can't go against it much and then kalau orang persoalkan pun dia akan, dia akan boleh ditindas macam itu saja. And then, kalau kita letak keistimewaan, keistimewaan is a privilege. Dia jadi macam uh, something yang membezakan strata komuniti tau. Daripada dia jadi hak istimewa, dia boleh jadi satu bentuk hak keperluan ataupun bantuan yang kita boleh bagi dekat kumpulan tertentu supaya mereka, once mereka dah, dah bangun sampai mereka boleh jadi sama, sama rata dengan komuniti lain. Bantuan keperluan asas ataupun um, hak keperluan itu lebih menepati daripada hak istimewa. Problem saya dengan statement ni adalah yang fras, uh, phrase hak istimewa. Um, so when you say hak, benda tu macam jadi something that people will think benda tu sebati dengan saya. I was born with this. Uh, and sebab dia hak, no one can take it away from me and no one else deserves this. Where in when you say something is uh, it's a special privilege, is a hak istimewa, benda tu jadi exclusionary. Kau melainkan orang lain. I feel that's where it's, uh, for me at least, that's where the issue is. Lah. What I'm taking from those who agree with that is that I do agree with Pavitra when she mentions that, okay, if it is a hak ke, keperluan instead of a hak istimewa, I, I do believe that that is sort of allowed you can have certain rights, but there has to be a basis for it. There should be a need for it. It shouldn't be like what Daniel said, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm born into it. That's I, I receive this privilege. Nama saya Sarah Sofia Binti Ali Fresudin. Saya bekerja sebagai account executive, um, basically sales account executive. Um, saya berasal daripada Selangor, tapi kampung dekat Negeri Sembilan. I am from a mixed marriage. My dad is Chinese, my mom is Malay. So, I don't agree because because I've seen it through my eyes, my own eyes, and you know, I'm growing up now. So it does 
it affects me personally and I don't think it's right because sometimes when I think about it, it's like there the the two halves of me, you know, one's Malay, one's Chinese, so like I can't pick which half of me I want to go with, you know. I it's it's who I am. Saya pernah merasa kehilangan peluang pekerjaan, pendidikan dan lain-lain kerana kaum atau identiti saya. Wow, it's such a <laughs> sedihnya. Okay, I agree with that. Um, it happened to me once before, very recently actually, like around last year. I actually went for this in government interview for um, an architect for JKR. I can find it the first when I first entered the uh, interview hall. I found it very weird that, hey man, I'm the only like Chinese in the group. Everyone was Malay. It was pretty weird. Like, hey, why am I here? That like you know, it's kind of like I start feeling like I'm I'm like here to fill up the quota. So when I went for interview, you know, it was a very good interview and all that. Even though I waited the whole day for my turn, but then at the end, like you know, I didn't get a job offer. You know, they they didn't even come back to any like my um follow ups. I kind of feel weird that I'm like this token guy. So um, let me just clarify first. Saya dah, uh, saya masuk universiti, study, I'm working in Malay, uh, majority Malay environment. So uh, basic stuff, memang saya okay sebab I'm, I'm surrounded with my Malay friends. So the moment you step in sebab kita belum buka mulut bercakap dengan siapa-siapa like our interviewers or anything. Like when we filled up the form and then submitted, they called and then they interviewed and then I said, okay, fine. Then um they were like so you Indian so I said yeah betul and then uh they felt like okay nanti we will get back to you and then after that it uh turns out that I had thirteen friends who applied with me the same job there was only one Indian and there were two Chinese friends um apparently um nine out of my Malay friends got the job one Chinese made it and the other two we did not. So uh they were vacancies for ten positions and then they say oh we need more Malay sebab kita akan lagi banyak berkomunikasi dengan community out there. So at that time, I felt like, okay, yes, because I have the language and then I can communicate with people too. So what does, um, what did my, why did my race and my religion came into the picture when what you need is just the skill? Okay, so my name is Pavita Panim Salva. Um, I am working currently as an executive officer in the students management section, students of Federation University from Malaysia. And uh, I'm from Milan, which is Milan, but currently residing within the campus as one of the fellows. Okay, uh, when we say as hard istimewa, right, it's like an exclusive um, privilege that we provide for a certain group of people. We should, kita perlu berikan uh, hak ataupun keperluan kepada kumpulan tertentu rather than uh, keistimewaan. It makes them like they're superior, which, which, is, um, which is going to eventually create a lot of problems. That's what most of the countries are facing right now. So I'm just going to ask, because um, I was put in a situation where um, my superiors were Chinese, um, and then we were going to go to a like, meeting board member with the um, government, and they asked, they put me into it. And they, but they were upfront. They were they I was like, okay, we're going to go to meeting with the government. We need you to be in there, because we need you to converse with them, and we need you to we need you there. It's not said, you know, we all know why I have to be there, but they will not, they will not tell me because they know how sensitive the issue is. Um, so I think in that sense, sedih lah kalau macam all I'm there for is untuk tunjuk muka, tunjuk yang orang company ni ada Melayu. So boleh buat kerja. So I rasa macam, it's, it's a very sad fact if that's all I'm there for. No offense to that company, I love that company by the way. <laughs> That was one of the best companies I've been in. <laughs> that was so many. <laughs> uh, tanpa tindakan affirmatif, saya dan keluarga saya tidak mungkin mengecapi kejayaan seperti sekarang. Alhamdulillah, saya dapat kerajaan uh, daripada marah untuk sambung belajar di luar negara. Jadi kalau saya bukanlah anak Melayu, saya anak Cina ke ataupun anak bangsa lain memang mustahil lah dapat peluang sini sebab parent pun bukannya daripada keluarga yang senang sangat nak biayai jadi mungkin saya akan masuk universiti awam je uh, As for myself uh, 
sebelah ayah saya lah. Uh, dia lahir di Seriki, Sarawak. Uh, nenek saya, Mak Tunggal. Yang saya kenali memang dia lama, <laughs> dia seorang dengan anak-anak dia. Which is my father dengan my uncles, auntie semualah. Uh, my father memang Mara recipient. Uh, and so is some of my aunties and uncles juga. And my auntie sampai dapat PhD semua. And you know, it's a spillover effect. Then, bila when it comes to generation, my generation, uh, saya dengan cousin-cousin saya, semua Alhamdulillah memang I tak nak cakap sukses-sukses but you know, we are comfortable. We uh, dapat nak study jauh-jauh mesti ke mana nak di lokal pun boleh nak study apa pun nak tak ada kekangan rasa nak okay i have to speak or something and so and so so yeah definitely i would say my keluarga dari previous generation to this generation ah uh, memang benefited from a commitment the jps scholarship it allows me to start further my studies in australia and i guess you know even with my own money or with my parents' money, I would never achieve those achievements, you know, without any help from the government at the time. So my name is uh, Victor Chin. I'm, I'm from Kuching, Sarawak. I was born um, in the village in Syrian, actually. I was an architect before, a practicing architect. Now I found myself um, teaching as a design lecturer for uh, interior design. The main thing that I learned is that um, I think there's still a lot more improvement to, to go with. I think a lot of people has very good ideas and all that, even ideals. I think it's all, all the way to like, how do we achieve this? How do we make it to practice? I think the next thing is whether we can you know, take all this experience, uh, what we had experienced just now, like all the people gathered here today, I think they all have very similar values. They all wanted to, to reach that one thing of like, you know, making, uh, making Malaysia great again. <laughs> Dasar tindakan alternatif memberi kesan positif kepada pembangunan Malaysia. Saya setuju tindakan alternatif ini boleh membangunkan Malaysia. Sebab pada momen inilah saya yakin yang kita masih lagi tengah cuba untuk menimbangkan titik kaum. Dan kita punya titik permulaan adalah pada perbezaan yang skala dia besar. Jadi, bagi saya dengan tindakan afirmatif ni yang dijalankan uh, saban hari jurang tu semakin mengecil bagi saya juga tindakan afirmatif ni perlu diubah selaras dengan peredaran zaman pada setiap masa tindakan afirmatif tu perlu diubah lebih kurang juga dia related juga dengan apa yang Hadis cakap sebenarnya dia uh, kalau membantu saya going back to my first answer lah yang tadi tu kan eh. segala tindakan afirmatif ni kalau dia bersasar kepada golongan yang memerlukan bantuan itu then it's fine. So dia bersi, dia bersifat inclusive instead of exclusive. Di mana you don't preset like only this group akan dapat bantuan ataupun benefits from this dasar ataupun tindakan affirmative. This group of people yang memerlukan ini akan menerima bantuan ataupun manfaat daripada tindakan affirmative then I would agree. With it. I, I I think I was one of those yang disagree. I feel that the danger with that is kan bila kita pakai label to put a name on a certain community or group, then the policy becomes oh uh, something a bit of what Pavi said about exclusionary. Ah, uh, tiba-tiba just because I only fulfill four out of five of the four out of five, huh? not even two out of five. Four. Very near four out of five requirements. I cannot get certain help, and off you go. Ah, uh, kau cari jalan kau sendiri. My name is uh, Muhammad Daniel Darnas bin Muhammad Yakub. I'm from Kuching, Sarawak. I think one main thing I learned from today's session is that um, from how I see what is uh, quote unquote wrong with Malaysia, um, other people don't might might won't might not see it that way. Um, and that's not to say uh, I'm fully wrong either. So that means, what this means is that basically, kita semua ada pendapat by line. Um, and you know, uh, it's learning how to live with those differences. Dasar tindakan afirmatif harus ditamatkan apabila ikuti dicapai. Contoh mungkin yang saya boleh bagi secara 
uh, general secara umumnya probably adalah daripada segi pemberian subsidi. Kita mengambil uh, contoh dari segi pertanian. Ya. Contoh bila seseorang uh, petani itu telah mencapai tahap, satu tahap tertentu yang mana bila dari segi pengeluaran uh, hasil-hasil pertanian sebagai contoh telah memenuhi matlamat yang telah di, di uh, diletakkan pada sesuatu uh, ataupun standard pada sesuatu hasil itu seharusnya subsidi itu kita berikan ataupun uh, fokuskan kepada golongan sasaran yang lain kita tak lah um, stuck dekat satu tempat je so macam Kadija cakap once the aim is achieved uh, kita kena look at things in a different way lah the doubt yang macam setengah-setengah cakap ni sebab apa <laughs> then suddenly talk okay, jadi maksudnya macam tu Uh, so our current existing affirmative actions lagi tak settle, tak boleh cakap lah. <laughs> just that, hmm, that is one thought, right? Um, so it's like saying, um, if today, today, the affirmative action which is currently ongoing, if we were to say, esok, uh, um, you know, despite equity or not, is that the way to go? So that's why like, macam, mm, mm, quite a tricky question lah. Uh, I'm kind of half and half. I don't know. I got this feeling kan. To get the equity, you need affirmative action. But once you remove the affirmative action, what happened to the equity? You know, does it go back to the status quo or does it stay as equity? That, that was, that's where I like, I'm kind of in between of both. What happened if you remove the affirmative action? Does, do we lose the equity or not? So that's the thing. So that's why I'm not really sure. Uh, my full name is Khadija Isha. So currently, I'm working as a diplomatic and administrative officer, or better known as PTD and the public service. Mungkin daripada banyak-banyak statement ataupun perkara yang kita bincangkan tadi, saya, yang paling saya suka adalah untuk kita empathy. Jadi empathy itu sebenarnya penting sebab bila kita mendengar pandangan orang lain dan kita meletakkan uh, diri kita dalam situasi orang itu, jadi kita sebenarnya lebih faham dan lebih mengerti berdasarkan kepada pengalaman orang-orang di sekeliling kita. Saya harap semua insan di Malaysia dapat memperoleh peluang yang sama rata bagi mengecapi kejayaan untuk kebaikan bersama. Itu haus ke sebab semua setuju? Semua setuju. Setuju kira. Haus ke dah lah. Definitely, I hope that all Malaysians are able to get to achieve a dream if they want to be PM, if they want to be uh, an astronaut, you know, it should be because they want to and they should be able to be given that opportunity, not just because of your race, because of your colour, because of your gender. Well, that one I totally agree with. I mean, that's what we all want to achieve at the end of the day. Uh, equal opportunity for everyone. Right now, like, we've seen a lot of people who are struggling the pandemic they are you know living by the age if, when you have that kind of empathy you, you feel sad seeing people struggling and stuff like that that's where you know that you know you want to have this equal opportunity equal rights uh, equal platform for everyone you know you don't want to see people suffer i think that's the beautiful thing about being a human being you know to have that kind of emotion it could recent events are uh, olympics right you know our badminton doubles getting bronze uh today as is all uh And that was getting silver for us. You know, at that point, it's like, kita tak kisah kot di Melayu ke Cina ke apa. It's like, these are the people who are fighting for our country's glory um, in the world stage. And then suddenly for that short moment, tiba-tiba kita, uh, um, we, don't, we, we don't care. They're Malaysian, we see them as Malaysians. I think that should be the spirit lah. Uh, I think it's uh, very good. It, it will be good every now and then. Remember and go back into that spirit of remembering your success is my success. Um, and you know, it's like Sarah said, it's never an individual thing. Uh, bila kita seorang dapat naik, it means everyone else gets to rise and that's yeah, really important to remember.